Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Operation Iraqi Freedom continues this eighth day since the coalition ground forces entered Iraq to deny freedom to the Iraqi people. In the past 24 hours, we continued combat operations against regime forces, conducted strikes against regime command and control, and took major steps forward in setting the foundation for the future Iraq. In places where we encounter paramilitary forces and terrorist-like death squads, we are, we are inflicting severe blows, actively hunting for them. I want to show you a recent A total of 12 missiles have been fired we believe them to be in the Ababil 100 or Asamud family, and those have been launched from within Iraq toward Kuwait. We're seeing a rate of about one per day at this point, and all of the threatening launches have been intercepted by Patriot missiles. I want to show you a recent example of an attack against an Ababil 100 on its carrier, or as we call it, a transporter erector launcher. The target was near Karbala. Again, the missile is aboard, and so you'll see a fairly significant secondary explosion. I have one before and after image to show you today. The target is a military barracks for a division installation near Baghdad. Again, as you can see, the specific places where we target are by design. That's to achieve a specific effect against a particular part of a, a structure like this one. The aim points are as you see them, and this is post-strike, the results of the attack. The degree of destruction that is, that is sought after varies depending on what type of weapon system we choose and what the desired effect is. A particularly effective operation occurred last night in An Nasiriya involving special operations aircraft <coughs> destroying two paramilitary headquarters. Our land component, consolidated territory gained over the last several days and conducted active security operations to eliminate identified terrorist death squads. Concurrent with our combat operations, our efforts to preserve Iraqi resources and our humanitarian efforts are picking up the pace, leave from the south particularly. Clearly there's much work ahead for the combat action to remove the regime and the humanitarian action to help those liberated from the regime. The coalition is up to the challenge and more than ever, the outcome is not in doubt. I'm ready for your questions. Have you broken the first rule of soldiery and underestimated your enemy? We believe that we're still consistent with our plan and how we designed it. There will always be things that occur on the battlefield that, not, uh, that are not precisely as you calculated them in your design. The strength of a plan is the ability to adapt it to the realities of the circumstance while still remaining focused on what it is we seek to do. Your Associated Press Television News. Uh, you spoke a moment ago about your ability to degrade the various levels of the regime within Baghdad. I mean, can you speak specifically to what evidence you have that you've been able to accomplish this at all? I mean, have you crippled the regime? One of the stated goals of the war. Well, Jeff, we, we do have indications that the regime is in disarray and its abilities to command and control are clearly being affected by the work that we're doing. Uh, civilian casualties from the bombing in Iraq. Can you comment on those figures and tell us what you uh, 